Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to an extraordinary week in US electoral history and an extraordinary week for financial markets. A disastrous one for the pollsters, a reversal of fortunes for Democrats and Republicans alike, and an extraordinary few days for US and global financial markets, the biggest election day rally in recorded history. Well, let's get into some charts and see what financial markets are telling us about the electoral result. So the presidential count continues, but if the trends are broadly right, no blue wave, no blue sweep, and at best a blue ripple for Joe Biden's Democrats. If Trump accepts a Biden win, and that's a big if, we end up with a centrist Democratic president hamstrung by a marginally red Senate. That means less fiscal activism and legislative checkmate in many areas. So I'm afraid focus will move ahead to the 2022 Senate races to see if this can be unlocked. Why did the pollsters get it so wrong? Well, that's a, a question for many, many years to come. But what we do know is they used old census data, 2010. They didn't update because of COVID. Uh, they seem to be skewed to the Democrats. Could that have been old-fashioned polling techniques, particularly landlines? Trump gained surprising support from minorities. But pollsters did get right this blue shift phenomenon, which should continue to see play out in so many states. Let's move to the next slide and look at the Senate race looking like a Republican hold, but of course Georgia has two Senate races that will be in runoff in January, so we won't know the final result till then. If again the trends are right, expect a hawkish, a fox-like Mitch McConnell, the Republican leader, to use his very effective blocking policies to ensure policy gridlock. One of the first places that's going to hit is the stimulus package, and remember Trump will still be in office till Jan 20th, so you saw Jerome Powell yesterday very worried as Federal Reserve Chairman that the magnitude of fiscal stimulus needed as COVID cases surge in the US won't be easily available. Financial markets, though, on slide four were euphoric. They took this hamstrung policy to be the best of all outcomes. We get a new president, very acceptable internationally, rejoining many of the international communities, signing out to Paris. But we get the Republican Senate being a real lock on some of the more radical spending policies. So this restrictive policy framework, traditionally good for financial markets. Look there, the NASDAQ composite in light blue, the world index in dark blue, and gold in red up very strongly. The strongest election rally uh, almost that uh, markets have ever seen. On the right-hand side, you can see that sharp drop-off in equity market volatility. But there are concerns ahead because, of course, the Biden reflationary trade, this idea of this huge stimulus program backed up by his Green New Deal, is now under threat. So you can see U.S. inflation expectations, which we followed on these slides regularly, beginning to roll over. The dollar, its weakest for the last two years, and the U.S. 10-year bond yield gapping down quite aggressively. This is a worry because if it's monetary policy alone, as Jerome Powell indicated, there are risks that we enter a liquidity trap. We simply can't reactivate growth. So let's move forward to what happens next. Vote recounts, a slew of legal challenges to local and state electoral decisions, none of which our advisors are saying have a very high likelihood of success, but there will be a barrage of activity by the Trump camp. If, though, Biden secures a narrow victory, then we assume Mitch McDonnell will keep his caucus unified in the Senate and the bill back agenda is on hold. So let's look at the dates of the diary for the month ahead. By December 8th, the states must resolve any underlying controversies in their voting and make the final decisions on the appointment of their electors. December the 14th, those electoral votes are taken in the states. And on January the 6th, Congress counts the votes in Washington. If by chance no presidential candidate wins 270 electoral votes, it, perhaps even those electoral voters go rogue, vote in a way that isn't consistent with the position in their states, then under the 12th Amendment, the House of Representatives decides the presidential outcome. The vote would be taken by state, with each state having one vote. That, of course, puts the Republicans in the driving seat, and the process is overseen by the vice president. Assuming this doesn't occur, January 20th, 21 at noon is inauguration day. So I'm afraid a tense month ahead. So what does this mean for our investment policy? Well, I'm glad that we've maintained our overweight in equities. That looked a little bit tough in the past weeks as we saw that sharp setback in markets. 
but the strong message of more liquidity out of the Federal Reserve, out of the Bank of England, out of the ECB has continued to drive markets. And we participated well in this growth led rally out of the United States in the last three or four days. But some caution going forward from here. The electoral machinery in the US is ramshackle. A whole number of ruses and techniques can be used by the Trump camp, and we don't yet know the final result. So I would be a little bit more cautious, but so far it's been a good week for us in financial markets, and potentially if we have a divided Senate and White House, a good week and a good outcome for the global economy going forwards. Thank you.